Okay then everyone, uh, if you, you could grab your uh, squidgy Pilates balls and also if you have a pair of Franklin balls then grab those as well. Yes, perfect, perfect. Um, we will start standing up using the Franklin balls and then we'll move on to the uh, other squidgy balls. So yeah, apologise if I cough or splutter or start to slightly choke because of the pollen that's um, been around today. So um, we will start by placing one of the balls. So actually, no, before we, before we do, stand up. And then I'm gonna do this sitting down because I get cut off when I stand up. So just take one ball in one hand and a Franklin ball in the other hand. And I just want you to tap along your shoulder and down your arm with the ball. Just to, especially over parts of the body perhaps that may be a little bit tight, maybe from using mice or mouses, whatever the, whatever the uh, plural is keyboards so sometimes we get quite tight in here sometimes it's it's the wrist or around the thumbs and just tap along there maybe come up towards your ears just starting the class slightly differently if you don't have franklin balls you can get you can use tennis balls but be a little bit more gentle with tennis balls because they're a little bit harder than these squidgy balls the great thing is about these balls is that they've got these cups in them that do also act like acupuncture um cups okay so let's switch over to the other side so you don't have to switch the balls but it does come along the side and just lengthen the arm so again you may feel a little bit sort of here might be a little bit tender from using the keyboard and then come along the the inside and then up along over the collarbone the shoulder this is also a little bit better than I think actually than using your fingers because sometimes people can say tapping because it takes the fingers out of the equation I know that that sounds really obvious but the brain and the fingers have a symbiotic relationship so um, some in some schools of thought if you put your hand on somewhere that's injured then or somewhere or like you've got backache and you put your hand here the brain will associate that area with pain all the time and so it can actually reduce the um reduce the ability for you to heal because you're constantly reminding going oh yeah my pain oh yeah my pain whereas actually if you don't put your hands there and then you use movement or you go to see other practitioners to unravel that then your body can actually start healing rather than returning to that point okay so let's come on just a little bit more on here so this part for me is a little bit sticky so just tap away okay so we're going to start standing up and then we're going to place one ball underneath the ball of the foot and the other ball just underneath the armpit so if I was to kneel down so you can see me don't kneel down just you and me standing up but it's just it's just tucked underneath so you want to keep this connection here so rather than it just be softly held you want to just give it a little bit of connection here your uh, your shoulders may be a little bit zingy um, from that tapping which is great okay so i always do this green ball on on green floor not particularly helpful is it let's actually i'll move my move my mat away a little bit there you go so just pop the ball onto the ball of the foot so i'll to stand sideways so you, you can see and then connect that ball the uh, franklin ball if you've got a tennis ball it will be a little bit harder but just don't don't hurt yourself let's put it that way and then just start to press the ball of the foot onto the the ball using your body weight and again only go as far as your 
foot structure allows you. So some people are able to stand on prickly things with ease. I'm a massive wuss. I can't. So for me, my feet are pretty tender. Um, so and then roll the foot back. So just be just be mindful of where your feet are. They may be different from how they are today, uh, how they were yesterday, how they are tomorrow, etc. So let's just roll that foot. So we got now. When you get to the uh, the instep, might actually be really lovely to feel that. You may feel a little bit of connection with the muscles going to some of the toes. Maybe it's the big toe, maybe it's your little toe. And just roll it around a little bit because what we're doing is we're spreading and opening up the feet whilst we do this and then come onto the heel. So the heel can be quite a little tight bundle of things. Uh, because that's where all of the muscles go up the leg and the fascia and especially if you have plantar fasciitis this can actually be quite a tight part so you can just press the ball into the heel here maybe you'd want to go around the edges a little bit like this just generally kind of the thing with this the rule of thumb is just feel it and feel do what feels good and then we're going to eke our way back so maybe if you've got a tight or a, or a slightly sensitive big toe joint or any other joints on your toes, then just be careful around that area. Alternatively, it might feel really nice. So to maybe spend a little bit of time on that place. And then we're going to come down to the final part. We're going to come down to the toes and we're just going to let the toe so the toe fascia just sort of open up. So just bend here. It's as if you're coming up on two high heels. And then roll just a little bit more, maybe to get a little bit more purchase. Come up. That's it. And then roll just a little bit. Just roll back and forth. Okay. All right. So you might want to swap foot to the other armpit and put the other one the armpit one down to the floor or you might want to swap armpit to armpit and keep the foot on the floor it's totally your choice I don't mind just pop one back in there and just keep that connected and then just let's press the ball into the ball of that second foot ah oh, we didn't check the hamstrings did we so we'll find it, doesn't really matter, we can go on what we did. Uh, so, so just rolling around the ball of the foot, just noticing maybe, have a look, I'm all, I always stare at my feet when I do this, because um, I get quite fascinated about how, the, um, how my foot spreads across the ball. I have quite, quite wide feet anyway, but, um, it's always quite fascinating for me also to see the bones move um, and just notice what I'm, you know, what the ball is doing, what the pressure is doing. And then just bring the, bring the ball onto the instep again, roll to the side and roll to the other side of that instep, so just horizontally. And also be careful, especially if you're using slightly harder balls, just be really mindful of how much you're pressing in because the instep is where it's really sensitive and it can really and, it, and if you believe in reflexology i do i'm a i do um really think that chi traditional chinese medicine has its place um and the the organs are mapped out across the foot so actually i think that this you know the correlation of the sensitivity of the instep plus the fact that a lot of the major organs are positioned there um no if you don't believe in it then that's totally fine um but just something to consider um and then bring to the heel and just bring it over to the side here and then bring to maybe roll around the edges. 
just be, of course we're on a ball, so do be a little bit careful of how you, um, how you're doing that. And then we'll roll backwards again, spending a little bit time now, maybe on the areas of which you feel that you would like to a little bit more space in. Maybe it's the ball of the foot, maybe it's the instep, maybe it's just where the ball and the instep meet or where the heel and the instep meet. And then maybe press a little bit of action into your big toe joint or one of the other joints. And then we just come onto the toe. Just let that fascia open up. So for some, this can be really easy. For others, it can be pretty pretty painful. Um, I know when I first started um, doing sort of movements like this, when I was um, actually in New Zealand, um, a yoga teacher asked me to sit and tuck my toes under and I nearly jumped out of the class or jumped out the window of the class because it was so painful. Um, and so just gently, just be really gen gentle with yourself here. There's no point making it painful. And then just bring up and then just roll your leg. Okay. So light on, see where I've got light on the subject, seeing it's gone a little dark. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is I want you to roll down and I want you to come towards the floor. And whilst we didn't check beforehand, I want you to notice whether or not there's a difference in how you are doing your forward bend. So for me, when I do my first forward bend, usually I'm around here-ish and actually I'm right the way down. Backs of my legs are feeling really nice and long rather than a little bit of a oh ah tightness that can sometimes happen, which is more frequent than than not. Well, of course, we're doing the session actually in the afternoon rather than the morning, so it is different. Your body is different because it has been awake for quite a you know substantial amount of hours. But I think that not this much, and I've not done any major exercise. Um, or any classes today to facilitate this length in my hamstrings and my pelvis movement. Okay, so come down onto the mat. And we're going to use the Franklin balls and we're gonna pop the Franklin balls in the mid, so I'll kneel it up so you can see where I'd like them roughly. Sort of there-ish if you can see. So just kind of at the top of the buttock, but to, towards the middle. You'll feel if it's right or not. And do feel free to adjust. So let's just find the spot in the bottom. So really, if you're lying on your... Um, you're lying on your on your back with the balls into your buttocks. You know how we talk about hip joint width apart. You want to think if you were to put a line down from where you're from the top of your pelvis down through it into the balls, you'd be roughly where your um, where your thigh joints are. Okay, so you want to be around a fist. Your knees want to be around a fist's width away from each other and your toe and your feet to be roughly in the same position as well. So don't don't, don't worry if they're just, if they're slightly off or anything like that. Just feel how they feel for you. Okay, so now we're going to just let the pressure of the pelvis sink into the balls. So what we're doing here is we are just allowing the musculature of the buttocks just sink and soften around the arc of the ball. Because they're smaller and a little bit firmer than this Pilates ball, it's gonna be a very different feeling and experience. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the pelvis towards the navel. We're gonna do some pelvic clock movements and then roll the pelvis 
back, gently moving to the navel and then away from the pubic bone. I want you to just keep them, keep this, uh, 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 the, the pelvis as level as possible in terms of noticing how the pelvis is moving as you're doing this. If you're noticing that one half is slightly higher or much higher or just higher than the other, then just have a think about anchoring that side down just a little bit more. Maybe you can imagine that you've got a heavy weight, um, like, I don't know, like a bag of flour or a bag of sugar or something like that, just on that, um, or a sandbag or something on that, on that side, just to allow that, um, that musculature just to soften a little bit. And then just keep on rolling. So this also carries on from the from last class, actually, when we were talking about pelvic movement and and the legs. And then I want you to go from side to side. So drop your left hip downwards, and then drop your right hip downwards. So you may find this a little bit more, giving yourself a little bit more feedback by this. And if you wish to, then you're more than welcome to press into the, um, the opposite foot to the side that's going down, just to encourage that movement. And that's generally how I teach that in this class. Drop down. Just let the side of the pelvis just drop a little bit more. Then I invite you to notice what's going on up the rest of the rib, up the rest of the spine towards the rib cage. This, you may start to feel that there's a little bit of a movement going on in the mid spine and the upper spine. If there is, fabulous, keep that going. And just, but notice that it's a natural movement because if we move our pelvis, the rest of the, rest of the spine does move. You may even notice that your head is moving a little bit. If you don't notice, don't worry, okay? But it's just a sort of a, a further step on the sort of on the journey of proprioception that um, I like to foster when you move with me. And then let's just take a, take a, a breath at the neutral pelvis. So let that pelvis just sink again on both of the balls and just allow that to move to 12 and 6 again so navel to pubic bone just rocking slightly maybe you may notice some changes in that movement maybe it feels just a little little bit more um, fluid maybe not maybe it feels a little bit more tense if it is then just um, stop maybe and just give your bottom a little bit of a wiggle and then go from side to side again dropping down and weighting your your back of your pelvis onto one of the balls a little bit more okay and then we're going to take the balls away momentarily and just soften the bottom down. Keep them in your hands because we're going to pop them up at the back of the, at the top of the spine. Now, you may wish to have a cushion to pop your head on actually, um, because just depending on how far your, uh, you know, how far you come off the ground on these. So roll onto the side, I should actually do it this way, roll onto the side and pop the ball just just below the, just above the shoulder blade, but just below the neck. So you should just be able to roll from side to side and just as your shoulder blade comes up, you can just find the space. You may need to wriggle around a little bit. And then just bring your arms up towards the ceiling. When you're when they're in the right place, they may or may not feel a little bit testy, or they may not. So just find that spot that's right for you. 
So you can see I'm shifting around mine a little bit. Bring yours up towards the ceiling. And then just draw the fingertips towards your back, the, towards the behind you, so where your head is. And then bring your arm bones towards your pelvis. So imagine here that you're, you've, you're a puppet and you've got a rod between your arms. And they're just moving gently around that dowel that's sticking through your shoulder blades. It's a very, very simplified version of what you're doing here. But I want you to also then imagine that your shoulder blades are just moving across your, your rib cage like soft butter. And they're just sliding one way and another when you're moving your arms. Doesn't matter which way they are moving. Just imagine that they're moving like angel wings. And they can be any kind of angel wings or, you know, they can be any kind of visualization. I just want them to really feel soft and moving. That's it, good. Now bring your hands up towards the ceiling. Spiral your arms so your palms are facing away from you. And I want you to just press gently through the air. Don't come all the way down. I want you to come into a wide V. It may look like my hands are um, level with my, with my shoulder girdle, but they're not. They're in a very wide V. And then bring them back up. So we want to ensure that we're not um, overextending here and then back. It may be a little bit nervy here as well so if that is kicking in for you then, um, then come back out of that movement. Just open up just a little bit, back off that pain. That's it. You may feel the shoulder blades working a little bit more. You may feel them a little bit more against the, um, against the balls here. That's it. Good. Now they're outwards. Spiral your palms so they're facing the, your feet. Draw your hands down towards your pelvis. Now press back up up towards your ears. So it's like we're doing a snow angel with our palms facing the body as they come down towards the pelvis and then up towards the ears. Your backs of your hands come up towards the ears. So it's a bit like a Spanish ole when they're doing uh, the tango or I can't remember off the top of my head if they do something else. I've got a funny feeling. It's the flamenco, that's it should know that and draw the arms up and then spiral your hands while they're by the ears palms facing each other and we're just going to move the arms towards the pelvis and back up again thinking about that puppet analogy that or visual that I sent I shared about how your arms are just moving backwards and forwards and then we're going to do some circles, so turn your palms so you're facing the ceiling, circle them up towards your ears and spiral your hands so your palms are facing again as they come down to the pelvis. Bring your hands up towards your ears with the palms up towards the ceiling, drawing down, opening out. Now we're coming up to the ears and we're going to reverse. So open the palms up towards the ceiling, spiraling the palms so they face the body up towards the seat, up towards your ears, palms to the ceiling, come down towards the pelvis, and one more time. Okay, now take the balls away from the shoulders. Soften the shoulders down onto the floor. Notice if there's anything to notice. Then take the balls again, pop them back underneath your bottom. And then let's bring our knees up. And I want you to just rock your knees in 
and send your legs away. Rock your knees in, send your legs away. And you'll notice that your abs start getting involved here a little bit. And your rib cage maybe too. So this is just the gentle hip part. Okay, so you can always come back here if this is where you wish to come to. Bring your your um, your legs up so your shins are parallel towards the ceiling. Bring your arms up towards the ceiling as well if you'd like to. And then we're going to shift the 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 um, thigh bones away from the pelvis. Bring them back in. Shift the thigh bones away from the pelvis. Bring the knees back in. Press the thigh bones away. And we're going to do with the arms as well. So we're going to lengthen the arms away with the um, the arms and the legs away from each other, connecting in with the abdominals. So here, I invite you to think about bringing the side seams of your body into the front of your navel. So if you imagine that you had a line down the middle of your body and to the side of the body, then those would be the um, lines that you would draw your side seams to. And again. And one more. Bring your hands on your knees and just let your knees hang out to the side here. So think about where the balls are and think about how your legs are coming slotting into your um, into your pelvis. So this is sort of like the basic rest movement for this section. But and then so you can bring them down, just come here, and then you can move your legs in and out. Let's just do those for a couple of times, just so you know if you want to drop down, then you can. Either hold them out or move them from side to side. So there's something about when you're externally rotating. It's very different to when you're doing things forwards and backwards, okay? So bring your shins up to where they were so they're parallel to the ceiling bring your arms up towards the ceiling too and then press away so doing the same thing as we were doing before but with externally rotated legs good rocking against the ball finding the connection with that midline drawing those side seams into that midline too now let's bring the arms in, if you'd like to join with the arms, please do. Arms and legs away. It's a very ladylike position, isn't it, this? <laughs> Promise you, it's good. That's it. Just waking up those glutes and the abdominals. And then bring your hands around the legs. Lengthen the legs up towards the ceiling and flex the feet, point the feet. I've got my arms up towards the ceiling, you're more than welcome to have them out to the side. You may need to shift the balls around a little bit or not. Flex the feet, point the feet, flex the feet. Open the legs just a little bit as you circle your feet, getting all of that fluid and exchanging the fluid in your ankles and also making this because we are lifting our legs up and the, the legs are so used to having everything drained down to them everything's draining up so we would actually have to work a little bit harder body wise to get our legs refreshed and also gives the opportunity for the body to really replace all of, and then turn your turn your um, ankles again, just to replace all of the lymph and, and everything. That's it. Now put, bring your heels together, bring your knees towards you. So we're gonna do frogs. Now I want you to imagine something slightly different to how we, well, we I often cue this. I want you to think, as you're pressing your legs away, I want you to think about lengthening your, your, your back of your 
pelvis away from the crown of their head. Okay? And then pull the knees in. Lengthening the back of the pelvis away from the crown of the head as you lengthen the legs away. Lengthening the pelvis away from the back of the head. Now we're going to add a layer on from that. After you're your lengthening the pelvis away from the crown of the head, as you bring the knees in, you're going to feel like you're widening your pelvis at the three and nine position of the clock. So the two knobbly bits, I want you to think that you're just lengthening those apart. So maybe they're reaching to the other side of the room. So lengthening the, the pelvis away from the crown of the head as the legs go long and pulling the pelvis apart as the knees come in. And again. And again. And again, one more time. Now bring the feet down. Take the balls away. Let's drop your pelvis down. And let's just have a little bit of a sense check how we are feeling in the pelvis. And now I would like to bring the Pilates ball in and bring it behind your, uh, where your bra strap would be, kind of in between your shoulder blades. But just like, so so here you can see it's propped up sort of in between, I'm just underneath your armpits, but you want to feel like, I always think that, I don't know why I describe it like this, but it's like if you're watching TV, it'd be really comfortable. So interlace your hands behind the head, let the thumbs come down either side of your neck, and just gently soften the spine into the ball. Elbows, so you can see them um, at the, the corner of your eyes. And then we're just going to press the heels of the hands into the skull, lengthen the skull away from the top of the spine. Now we're going to lengthen the skull away just a little bit more. So the body drops down just a little bit. You want to keep the pressure of the um, ball into at the back of the ribs. And then you turn your ribs towards your navel as you come into a chest lift. Lengthen away. Lengthen, 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 and come back in. Lengthen, 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 and come back in. Lengthen, 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 and come back in. And again, now we're going to come a little bit further away over the arc of the ball. Just let your body gently soften over the ball. Press into the ball to bring yourself back. Head is nested in between the hands. You're pressing into your head and you're pressing your, ha you're pressing your hands into your head and your head into your hands as you come over. It's feeling really safe. Your neck is really long. And you're just gently moving your pelvis, your rib cage over the ball and back. Over the ball and back. Now come up into that chest lift, bring your arms forwards, reach forwards, reach forwards, bring the thighs off the floor and then just place your hands behind the thighs. Bring your thighs in towards you, widen your pelvis here, and then press the thighs into the hands as the arms lengthen. Bring the legs in, pelvis widens. Lengthen the arms as the, as the thigh bones press into your hands. And again, in we come. Press the thigh bones into the hands. In we come. Press the th th thigh bones into the hands. Now take the front leg, place the hand on the shin, lengthen the back leg long. And then switch. And then switch. So you're just keeping, I want you to keep the pelvis 
um, stable by gently lengthening the legs. I want you to keep the rib cage stable by pressing the back into the into the ball. It's quite easy to rock here. So actually by keeping a stability, you're testing your midline. If you need to place your hand behind your head at any point, please do. Just a few more here as we move the legs. And then bring the hands behind the knees. Sorry, not hands behind the knees. Yes, hands behind the knees. Press into the thigh bone, come back up to sitting. There you go, perfect. All right, so let us, which way are we gonna go first? Let us do mermaid. I want you to really feel, you could actually, if you wanted to, you could put one or maybe two Franklin balls underneath your bottom here. Give yourself a little bit of a prop, a little bit of feedback. Or it might not feel good. So if it doesn't feel good, then don't. Bring your arms up towards the ceiling. And then we're going to drop over towards your right side. Bring the hand over. Let the shoulder come away from the ear. Lengthen the uh, left side. Up we go over towards your left side. Press the heel of the hand here to really open up this space. That's it, coming over. And then reaching over towards your left side. Reach with the fingertips, turn the rib cage so you find your hands on the floor. Widen the fingertips out. Press into the fingertips so you're encouraging a rotation of the rib cage. Eye gaze comes down towards your pelvis and then you rock so your pel so your rib cage comes into extension. Eye gaze travels along the floor. And then eye gaze travels along towards your pelvis. And then you eye gaze travels along the floor to whatever is in front of you. So you're in extension, rotated extension. Maybe give yourself a little bit more rotation, connection through your fingers, encouraging your shoulders to be a little bit wider here. Eye gaze comes down. And then up. Now take the, uh, the back hand in line with the pelvis again. Reach forward with that front hand and open up. And then come back over to the left side, the right side actually. And then come back, bring your legs around, reposition the balls if you have them underneath you. You might not feel you need them on this side. I'm going to be like a scape artist on my pelvis today. All right, so bring your arms out. Drop down over to the counter stretch drive. So come over towards your left side. And then come over towards your right side. And again. So again, always aim to keep your shoulder away from your ear. And again. Over. And then we come over towards your right side, place your heel of your hand down, reaching over. Reach, 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 reach. Maybe you need to remind yourself and drop your shoulder blade down just a little bit. Reach a little bit more, come over, rotate the rib cage, place your hands down, turn the rib cage around. If you're on the balls, you may need to put your fingertips here if your hands don't meet. I'm on my fingertips, just so you're wondering why I'm doing it slightly differently. Turning around, eye gaze comes down towards the pelvis and travels along as you come into extension. Eye gaze comes down towards the pelvis as you come into rotate, into flexion rotation 
and up through as you come into extension rotation and again and then just give it a little bit more of a rotation here place the hand down but in line with the pelvis draw the hand up peek underneath and then come back and do a counter stretch and then come back we're sitting on balls take them away and have a seat cross-legged okay seeing as it's thursday let's do some arms bring your fingertips out to the side feel like you're lengthening from the earlobes to the shoulders just bring your arms up towards your shoulder height reach 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 now bring the fingertips down and then press the heels of the hands away fingertips down press away fingertips down press away now rotate your arms so the fingertips are coming inwards and then rotate them so the fingertips are going outwards notice what's going on in your shoulders here but also notice equally how they may have changed from just having a small amount of ball action on your shoulders or maybe not that's it just be slightly observant that's all i'm asking bring the fingertips forward so your palms are actually facing out towards the the front of the room now flex the wrists that's it fingers forwards fingers away draw the hands up so your palms are facing the ceiling pressing opening out down to the side really lengthening your arms here then really lengthening imagine you're touching either side of the room flex the or extend actually the wrist as the fingertips touch over we go and again extend the wrist show the wrists are out to the rest of the world as the palms come up towards the ceiling and come down and again up we go flex the wrist interlace the fingers here reach up let the shoulders come towards the earlobes now move the shoulders away from the earlobes press up towards the ceiling let the shoulders come up towards the earlobes slide the shoulders away from the earlobes so i want you to focus on your shoulder blades here moving so again moving like this this is the action that you want to imagine that your shoulder blades are doing as you make this movement and then bring the shoulder blades down to the back of the rib cage bring your hands shoulder height press away and then bring your shoulders in press away i'm going to sit to the side so you can see press away and bring the shoulders the arms back into the shoulder sockets press away arms back into the shoulder sockets press away arms into the shoulder sockets press away arms into the shoulder sockets now let's come out to the side and do our favorite circles mini circles really imagine that the movement's coming from the where the arm and the shoulder meets Grow up from the spine all the way up towards the ceiling and then reverse. Reaching out with the fingertips and then do slightly bigger circles as you go back to the first way that you were going at the beginning. Really again reaching out, reaching out and then reverse that circle. So aiming to keep the similar space and then back the first way again maybe making them smaller towards the end and then reverse big to start off with and then small and then drop the arms down well done come on to your hands and knees 
roll onto the feet and just come into it um, into a holding place just soften onto the balls of the feet and just let yourself get your balance here maybe think about lengthening your soles of your feet not moving your feet but just feel like you're lengthening them anyway as you soft as they just soften as they get used to where we are place your hands down send your heels down towards the mat lengthen the legs and then find the insects pull up from the inner thighs pubic bone front of the spine and then just pop the skull on top of the head. Let the shoulders drop away from the ears. And there you are. That is our Thursday.